and we are drinking from the Garden Hose, your favorite Jet X podcast. Find us wherever you get the good podcast. Remember, like us, subscribe, and we're always looking for feedback on our great topics and where to go next. Ed, how are you? Doing great. You sound like you're uh, auditioning for like voiceover work. Seems well, like you have a new voice to start us off. I was just fired up. Uh, you got me excited. Uh, are you excited about our topic for tonight? Yes, I am. Crazy enough, I'm excited about a topic which I totally forgot about, which is take your kid to work day. Ed, what are your thoughts on taking your child to work? Well, listen, here's the, here, first of all, I, I've, so I participated in w- once in my life, and I'm going to get to that in a second. And the time I participated in it, I thought it was great. And I was just prepping for tonight's episode, and my daughter, who I took, told me how bad it was. So we'll get into that in a second. But here's here's my thoughts, and I think, Obi, you're probably going to go there as well. This whole take your kid to work day thing. First of all, I don't know where they advertise it, but, like, I run a, a business, right? No one tells me when it is, right? I find out when other people bring their kids to work, and they go, oh, today's take your kid to work day. And I'm like, that's interesting because it's not on a calendar. Like, I know when Mother's Day is. I know when Father's Day is. I know when all the hol- holidays are. I even know when Secretary's Day is. How do I not know when take your kids to work day? So that's my first problem. Like, how do you find this out? Like, do they tell you in the schools, have your kids skip tomorrow? Like, where do they advertise it, Obi? So I don't know where they advertise it, but I will say this. My company that I've been at for quite some time now, for a long period of time, has always announced we are having take your kids to work days activity on this day. Sign up. but So somebody knows when it is. Uh, and they make a big deal about it. And uh, so it, it's out there. And the kids know. Now, my kids have uh, come to my work on take your kids to work day. A grand total of one less than your kids. Which is zero. Which is zero. zero. Which is zero. So, like... This day started off like as a good idea. It was take your daughters to work there, right? Like so that young girls could see like what an office was like because they weren't really getting any exposure to it. But now they're I don't now they realize that they didn't need to just send women because you know everybody works now. So now it's just take your kid to work day. So teach your kid about the torture in their future day. Is that what it is? Well, listen, here, here's the thing. So we're going to go slightly on a tangent here because this is, this is where we're going as a society right now. Like everything's got to be equal. Like you're right. It started off as take your daughters to work day because they were underrepresented in the workplace. And let's face it, at the time, dads were the ones working and they wanted probably to promote dads hanging out with their daughters because they probably weren't hanging out with them, right? So like there's a whole reason why it was take your daughters to work day. Um, it, it brings me back to, I, you know, we were running a football class at, at my place of employment and we had the wording in the brochure, you know, learn, learn, how to learn, how, you know, uh, dad and son can learn how to throw a football like they see on TV or something like that. Or it was definitely male pronouns. Right. And we got a phone call from a mom pissed off because moms can play football too. Damn it. And, uh, I guess I saw that powder puff league or whatever, but at the end of the day, like sometimes it's okay to stick with where, where you started. Right. So I think to take your daughter to work day probably should have stayed that way. Anyway, I went off on a tangent. I just think things have to be equal. And I think it ruins some things. Now, just after we had a big episode, heads out the guys canceled. (laughs) That being said, I think that, you know, in this case, I I agree in that once it became Cape Your Kids to Work Day, it could have just gone away. Like, if we have to change it to that, then it's accomplished its goal. To, moving on, but be, it's a great point. It's a great point. Yeah, and so I mean, the, I I first noticed how horrible it was as an employee when a buddy of mine who uh, does not have children, and at this point, I'm going to uh, go out on a limb and say he's never going to have children. But he would be like, I'm here. I'm working. What are all these kids doing? I can't work. And then other guys were like, I come to work 
to get away from my kids. Obviously, this is pre-pandemic. And like you, I'm it's here. Obviously, you. It's obviously you because your kids went a total of zero times. I I did not bring my kids because my office, you know, they would create like things for the kids. But then what are they getting out of it? They're not learning about my job. They're not going, oh, sitting at that desk is what a computer programmer does. They weren't learning about that. They were learning about arts and crafts and stuff. Like if, if you're going to teach my kid arts and craft and not give him a real practical lesson about what it's like to work, he should be in school learning math. And he, because both mine are kids, are boys. Well, listen, it definitely, yeah, you might get in trouble for using the, the male pronoun there. But listen, it, it turned into like elementary school skip day. That's what it's turned into right. at the end of the day. And, and But I know, I, I saw in my own company, I saw the progression. I know why they're doing arts and crafts. Because what happens is somebody sneak attacks you the first time, right? Like you're not aware it's take your kid to work day. Except somebody is. And they have like four kids or five kids in their family. And they show up with all of them. And there's no plan for them. And they're running amok. And everyone's like, what the hell is going on around here? And then somebody says, well, you know, it's kind of a good idea. But if we had it more structured, that could really work. So then the next year you get this flyer, you get arts and crafts. And then it becomes, you know, basically vacation camp day for your kids at a real place of business. It's not catered to do that exactly exactly and there, I just I, I remember the one year where it was it was I guess I would say it was super successful at my job one year but it was like you went to go eat lunch and you couldn't get a seat because you know there was just as many of the right there was like the right amount of seats in the dining hall right but now there's not because it wasn't a catered event, so people were like, we're eating our lunch, our box sandwiches, and our kids got a box sandwich. Like, come on. It was, it, it became, it becomes super disruptive in an attempt not to be disruptive. Uh, and I don't think the kids gain anything from it. It's the time that we, we stop this nonsense. This yeah, is so nonsense. I, I agree. So I'll tell you what my daughter told me about so we, we went from sneak attack, like, oh, my God, no one can be productive because kids are running all over the place, to we're going to do an event. It'll be cool. So people brought their kids, and I brought my daughter. And so what she told me today, she's like, yeah, Dad, it was such a waste. Like, I didn't even hang out with you. Like, I don't even know what you do at work. Like, I was hanging out with every other kid doing swimming and stuff. Like, sucked. So, so. So she got to go swimming in the pool. They did arts and crafts. I think they did a scavenger hunt around the building. But she's all pissed because when you go to work with your dad day, you should be hanging out with your dad. Now, what she forgets is there was a brief piece where we had the kids with the parents as part of an overall, like, all staff meeting. And the right. kids were, like, bored out of their freaking mind. So they don't want to be at work. Right. No, and, and, and that's the other thing. Like, what are you teaching them? Hey, like that. That if you take your kid to work like every day for a week without that, you know what your kid's gonna be like? I'm I'm not gonna work. That's not uh, never gonna work in the office building ever, ever. Because you can't do that when you're in elementary school age. That is just like I can barely do it as a old Gen Xer. There's like no way I would have possibly conceived doing it when I was in elementary school. Like, can we just do arts and crafts and call it work, please? Yeah. So. The last, you know, not my last thing on this because I could bitch about this all day because it's just ridiculous that you bring to, like I don't I don't get it and here's the other reason I don't get it and this is you know I'm upper management you know all these and we're right in the middle of March Madness right now the the basketball tournament right and what do we see in all the business articles like leading up to March Madness right so all the sports articles are about who's going to win but all the business articles are how much productivity the American workforce loses during the first two days, right? It's like right. billions of dollars that companies lose because their employees aren't working. They're watching the games when they're supposed to be working, right? right? How come we don't see an article of how much productivity is lost in the billions on take your kid to work day? Nothing gets done on those days. Not only does nothing get done on those days, but if you really wanted to calculate it, those people who arrange those events are not arranging them for five minutes. Like, 
because it's your company, you arrange those events the same way you arrange any other events. They're just a little cheaper. So it's like, there's got to be a team and you got to go to meetings and everything else that goes into an arranging event in a company goes into arranging. Take your kids to work day. It's not like, yo, let's, my sister is a retired arts teacher. We'll have her plan it and just show up. No, it's not that. No, my brother, he's a college professor, happens to have the day off, and he teaches, uh, he works with kids all the time. No, that's not who comes in. It's the regular people. It's it's ridiculous the amount lost on it. Yeah, I, there's no doubt. So, Obi, yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you. And what's really interesting about this topic is that usually I'm the cranky guy, and you're kind of like, well, Ed, you're a little over the top. But you, you are starting to get your wings, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is a topic that, that gets my goat, as the yeah, old folks say. I, I also think you're coming up on your 50th birthday very soon, and that's when the tide starts to change. <laughs> so it may not just be the topic, Obi. It may be that you are actually going to be a really old man this year. Uh, it's not this year, Ed. Not this year. You're that young? We got about... Oh, we no got to wonder why you very rarely bitch about it. We anything. we got about 54 weeks until I'm 50 years old. Oh my god. No wonder why everyone's like Obi's like the jovial guy. Yeah. He's like the cranky cuz I actually am an old cranky freaking guy. Right. And I'm still you you're trying to teach me and bring me along but I think I got to win here on this one cuz this is oh. oh yeah. I think you're crankier than I am on this one. I, I just I, I when they when that email came or the first thing I did is said I want to I want to bitch about this hey Ed how like boom right that's the first thing I did because you're like oh we we started this I'm like I kind of have a few things you're like we have a topic I was like we do like like I wanted to bitch about it but then I didn't have to so I put it out of my fucking mind and then you reminded me and now I'm ready to bitch and moan about it so let me ask you a question Obi when is it then because like I said I always get sneak attacked with it what Take your kids to work day. It's a day I'm going to work from home. That's that's. Which day is that though? I, I will look when it gets posted and the invite comes because I'm sure there'll be an invite. Like you know, first they announced it and they're probably like, "Who wants to come?" And then there'll be an invite reminding us that hey, when you're in the office that day, I will definitely not go in. I don't know when it is. Um, I you would think it it can't be like Friday because Friday next Friday most people are going to be off that day. Um, so it's probably like, I don't know. We can ask. I, I think what you should do though, at this point, cause your kids are older. You should bring your, you should actually bring your kids now. And, but, but with a different, with a different spin, instead of, you know, doing the arts and crafts, they should actually walk around and tell people what they should be doing. Well, both my kids have their own jobs. Yeah. So they should <laughs> go to your job. And tell people what they're doing wrong. Now that would be good. That that would be good. Uh, because especially uh my Alex, he would tell people what they're doing wrong, even if he had no idea what they were doing to begin with. I think that's why he should show up. Oh, he would be I think you should bring him. April twenty seventh. All right. So the end of so this is good. April twenty I'm gonna put I have to put that on my calendar. I'm working from home that day too. <laughs> And I'm, I'm gonna, gonna bring, and I'm gonna, you know what though? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get a little crazy. I'm gonna let my kids come into my little at home workspace. Woo! My kids to work that day. I might even let them show their face on Zoom. That, because my kids come into my workspace all the time. And they're like, all right, Obi, we gotta go, we gotta go on this other topic because I think we probably, I know you could bitch all day about take your kids to work day. Okay. So let's, we got, there's another topic that's just tangential to this one. Which is, you know, since COVID, remote workforce is bigger than ever. Zoom, most people didn't know what Zoom was until they found out what COVID was. And then they found out what. Oh, there it goes. What? So let me, let me tell you. What are your thoughts on people having their kids on camera on a Zoom call? So, Ed, I come from a very unique work from home environment at my company. And here's why. Before COVID, there was a decent amount of work from home to begin with. Plus my company is from Maine to Florida. Our footprint is Maine to Florida. We have 
branches and uh, executive locations. And that's not the word I'm looking for, not executive, but uh, administrative locations up and down the East Coast. So we as a company, we're used to most of our work being done on conference calls. And so nobody was ever on camera during those conference calls. So when the fact changed that you were working in an office to you were working at home on a conference call, nobody all of a sudden put themselves on camera. Like we do not go on camera except for the occasional team building event. That's the only time you'll see anyone on camera in my office. So, so even today, like even today, if you were on a Zoom today, people would have their camera off. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So what's really interesting about that is there are some CEOs that are on record, and I would be one of these CEOs if I was a CEO, that those people on Zoom that aren't on camera probably don't want to work at this company much longer. That may be possible. That may be it, but it's so embedded in my company's culture that you did, we had WebEx, um, everybody had their own WebEx and no, and everybody had their own conference line before WebEx. The idea that you would be on camera now just because you're at home is completely foreign. So I have a daily huddle meeting that's 15 minutes, 20 something people every day, same 20 something people, one person. And I'm not sure he's still, I'd have to, I'll have to check is ever on camera. And that is the, the, the head of the team, but nobody else is ever on camera at all. all. So you're taking this another step. Cause I wanted to talk about kids, but you're, you're telling me your, your coworkers don't even go on camera. I think it's rude. I think if you don't, if you're not on camera, you're not showing respect to the people you're meeting with. I think it's just flat out rude. And when I made the comment about that, you're not, you don't want to be working at that company much longer. It isn't because you're making a conscious decision. I'm looking for a job. It's because you're going to get your ass fired because you're rude and you're not being part of a team. I, I think that if, um, yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with that for a company that doing business on conference calls was a new thing at zoom and everybody got on, on camera when it started. Um, I think it would be a different environment. It's just, it is the conference call environment was so normal for my team from literally conference calls on a telephone, moving on to computer that by the time, even pre COVID you were on WebEx and nobody was on camera except on like a team building event. Yeah, I get it. We used to do conference calls too, and there was no camera, but now we're on camera. We're also in a hybrid situation. I have many people who are on Zoom calls who are in the office with people who aren't. And so we, you know, that's a divide that you're 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 fighting every day because if you're in the office, the last thing you want to see is some first of all, the last thing you want to see is somebody not on camera because you know they're probably not doing something, you know, that pisses you off because you're at work. The second thing you don't want to see, like virtual backgrounds have to be a must too, because you don't want to see somebody's freaking kitchen. Cause that just solidifies I'm at work and that motherfucker is home in their kitchen. So you, like, so you got to manage the workforce. You got to be on camera, you got to be engaged and you got to have a virtual background. But then like during COVID kids would show up. Right. And during COVID kind of cute, but we're three years after COVID. If you're ba if you're holding your baby again, I'm thinking you're not working. Uh, I'm more forgiving than you would be. Um, but, you know, it so, is weird. So if you take your baby to at-home work, it's okay. If well, you take your baby to the office on take your kids to work day, not okay. A hundred percent. You're right. I, I am one who believes that, and this comes from the culture of, of where I've worked for as long as I've worked there. And like I said, we already had people who worked from home and worked like five hours, vanished for three, came back and worked three, four hours. Like people who like, you know, they did their alone work from like 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. in the morning would, would vanish, probably play golf, who knows, until like four o'clock and then would hold meetings from four to six. And then you, you if you logged in at 930, they were like, 
we had people with all of the crazy schedules on the road, off the road, phone calls in cars. So it just, if you're taking care of your kid for two hours a day, and now somebody decides that they need a meeting, and this is when you've been taking your kid for care of your kid for two hours a day, that kid might be on the call. Um, I haven't seen it though, because like I said, we are not on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, if you saw it, it would go right up your ass. There's no doubt. I mean, you just get mad when a kid's doing arts and crafts in your lunchroom. Jesus. If you, I'm telling you, if you saw some kid on Zoom while you were working, you would not be very happy. It is conceivable. Like, by the way, when I when I work, uh, I I my office is upstairs. When I am in a situation where I need to be on camera at work, I come downstairs to where you see me now. This gets removed and is replaced by my diploma, and then I work. So it's like the, nice. the, the people who are watching can't see, but it's like a, a steampunk gas mask. For those of you who watch me on uh, my steampunk sports show, you'll know what it is. But yeah, you should just get a virtual background, and then you could you don't have to keep you like you have your diploma on the floor right now. No, no, no. <laughs> so you're ready to hang up there. It's all depending on who's who's coming by. Oh, oh. Job, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if I have a job interview, I'll have to come down here and put it up there. You know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you think people in your company turn their cameras on for job interviews? Um, I did when I interviewed for my newest role. I turned it on. I got dressed, turned it on. They turned theirs on. The I interviewed with the same group of people like twice. The first time it was on. The second time it was off. Wait, wait, you actually interviewed with your camera off? The first time it was on. Yeah. And then there was a second interview. And you didn't have your camera on. And nobody had the camera on. No. That's crazy stuff. Yeah, see, here's the thing I realized about you, Obi. Is And this is look how good looking I am. Like I am shit. I know. I'm, that's why you should by the way, you should always have your camera on. There's no reason why you shouldn't. Like you're actually just leaving like goodwill on the table. <laughs> By not putting your camera on. I'm just telling you that right now. It's That's like, the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Like, Everyone like, record that, like, play it back. And... Like, we all know, like, blondes, right? They want to be on camera because they get good. Like, we all know pretty people get more in life, right? Right. You should have your camera on more often, Obi. But here's the thing. Here's what I realized. I thought you are older than you are because of the way you went on that rant earlier. But then I just realized something else. You're inconsistent with your crankiness. But I'm still young. You're... Yeah, yeah, you're inconsistent. You're like, eh, my baby on camera, it's okay. You're like inconsistent. Me, cranky about everything. Consistently cranky. Give me another 54 weeks, give or take. We'll yeah, see. Well, yeah, we just got to hope this podcast hangs on for that long because <laughs> then, <laughs> wait, wait, if people get a load of us then with two cranky guys, Woo! we're not going to be able to deal with it. No, it's, it's, it's going to be rough. Now, I, I'm going to take a left hand turn here because there was something I I, I wanted to to ask you, and I know we don't uh, always go this way, but I one of the so one of the things that's going to happen to you, and I want to start prepping you for it and prepping the show for it, is um, you're going to go from two kids at home to one kid at home. So what happens to that second child is they become. Uh, they start to get to be like an only child. They get like, you know, for that little bit. And so there are things that you used to do with your older child that you, you are going to end up being like, well, does the younger one like this? And sometimes you're lucky and sometimes you're not. All of that to talk about uh, Sam anyway. Is she like excited as all get up about this Caitlin Clark uh, woman? Because I... To, to me, Friday night is the best basketball game of the season, and I, I can't wait to see it. And I was curious if Sam, as a about to be a college basketball player, is excited. All right, so that it's so funny you should bring this comment up because we we literally just had this conversation an hour ago because Caitlin Clark was just named the Naismith Player of the Year. Now, so an interesting twist here is Maddie Segrist from Villanova. Absolutely. So she's from my hometown. So she's from Poughkeepsie, New York, right? Went to the local high school. Not the high school I went to, but she went to the private school where all the good girl basketball players go. And in, her cousin played for me, coincidentally enough, um, when, I, when I was coaching uh, in another lifetime. 
So I have like this, like I never met Maddie Seagrass, but there's this connection, hometown girl. Right. So we root for her, right? And she won the Player of the Year award last year, and then this year she didn't, Caitlin Clark. So my girls know that I have a soft spot for for Maddie Seagrass, and so they're like, Ed or Dad, they don't call me Ed. They go, Dad, what do you think about uh, Caitlin Clark winning the Player of the Year? This was literally an hour ago, and I said. I think she deserved it. You know, she, I mean, she's amazing. She's an amazing player. And uh, all you have to do is watch her. She's amazing. 40 point triple. She's amazing. So they say to me, oh, well, aren't you upset? Maddie Seegers didn't win. I'm like, she didn't deserve it. Like, and then, but you got to realize Maddie Seegers had an amazing season. She, she, she scored 20 points in every freaking game this year. And which by the way, has never been done or it's been the longest streak ever. Right. So I'm going to interrupt you for a minute. Cause I didn't know how, whether I was going to come at this with the Maddie Seagrass didn't win it or, or Caitlin Clark, because I, I did not know how close the connection was going to be with the Gipsy. I'm glad it's there. Keep going, crank. Yeah. 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 So, so in any event, so she had an amazing season, but at the end of the day, she didn't deserve it. And I hate to say it, but she didn't. Caitlin Clark is an amazing talent. Right. So, so I say that. And then my daughter, I, I, because one of them is going to play in college. So we'll just we'll, we'll just go. I don't want to get anybody in trouble here. So one of them says, could have been either one, 50-50 shot. One of them says, yeah, she might be good, but she is a cocky mf -er, And I just can't stand that. She is so cocky. And I and I said, well, that's why she's so good. Because she thinks she's going to make the 35-footers every time she shoots a 35-footer. And they go in like 45% of the time. Like, to be that good. And I understand being cocky is not a good character trait in general, but for high level athletes, being cocky is the most important trait you can have. So yeah, she's cocky and she's awesome. So that's what I say about Caitlin Clark. Okay. Sorry for all those non-sports people that I know are listening to us, but I just, uh, I had to bring that up uh, knowing, uh, Enough event history, and he espoused on it uh, even further. Yeah. So are you and, and by the way, there's other really good women's basketball players that are still playing in the tournament right now. I mean, there's some just amazingly talented people out there that can play the game at and, a high level. But the one thing it all comes down to is they have amazing confidence. Like even Maddie Seagrass, I mean, the, the game they got knocked out, she took 29 shots. Hey. And I can get she didn't she I think she made not I, they lost because she had a bad day right she was nine for twenty nine I believe so she missed twenty shots I can guarantee you every one of those shots she, she thought, thought was in she thought was going in and she was not deterred that she had missed nineteen shots because she took a twentieth and missed it right think about that in life we give up after one or two bad things go bad for us she missed nineteen shots and still took another one. Going to make the next one. Going to make, I will find that touch. It's going in. It's going in. It's going in. And, you know, another another one who did not get to play this season is Paige Beckers, obviously. She's also amazing. But uh, She's amazing, but she's not on a Caitlin Clark level. A Kate, Caitlin Clark is just I amazing. Mean, oh, she's. They, they, they show the stats, her average three point. So the three point line is, I think, 22 feet now in college, right? International level, international yep. distance. Her average three point shot is 25.8 feet, which is two feet behind the NBA line, right? So her average is 25, and she shoots 45% on that average. It's so freaking ridiculous. Well, I know nobody wants to hear this, but it's it's freaking ridiculous. It, it, no, uh, you know, we should, it, it's still, uh, you know, it's the last well, day of Women's History Month, so we should talk about how many, and, I mean, in the women's the way, tournament blew the men's tournament away this year. Yeah, but, well... Uh, well, we could go there, too, because the men's tournament was pretty freaking amazing, too. But here's the thing. The other thing people don't realize, Caitlin Clark, Maddie Seegers, Maddie Seegers, Caitlin, let's talk about both of them, right? Both amazing. There is no doubt, right, that every team who plays against them, the number one thing they say is, we have to stop <laughs> Caitlin Clark and Maddie Seegers. So it's not as though they're doing this in a vacuum or they're not doing it with I mean, they are doing it with the best player guarding them or the best two people guarding them. They Every shot they're taking has somebody hitting them, touching them, and they're doing it still. So it's just amazing. And um, you're right, it's Women's History Month. And so, I don't know, look at the women's game 50 years ago and look how they were shooting the ball and then look at the game today. It's, it's amazing what they're able to do.
I guess it's because we stopped taking them to work with us on take your daughter to work day and we started letting them play sports and that's what happened. Or maybe NBA players were taking their daughters to work. There's some of that too. Some, <laughs> some of these, not the two that we're talking about, no, that... but there are high level women athletes right now whose dads did play in the NBA for sure. Absolutely. Uh, I believe Rodman's Daughter is a well, Rodman's daughter is a U.S. women's national team player, soccer. Right. So, oh, it's soccer. That's where she is. She's soccer a soccer player. Yeah, Dennis Rodman's daughter is a soccer player. And but there's a there's a, a local girl here, um, Jade Wallace. John Wallace played for Syracuse in the '95 national championship game. Played for the Knicks. I think eighth eighth number eight pick or twelfth pick. Okay. Uh, his daughter plays. Um, obviously she's tall. But she's he's tall. Good ball player. So yeah, there's a lot, and that's just one example. But if you even if you look in the um in the college level, a lot of those young ladies have former pro like AZ Fudd from UConn. Her dad played pro. And I think her mom even played pro too. So I mean, it makes sense. Uh, hey, and then, then there's JaVale McGee. His mom played pro. With Cheryl Miller. Well, that's a uh, that's a basketball family. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So all right, so we're we're, we're boring our non sports uh, contingent, but you know what? Uh, screw them. We're cranky. They they can get through this 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 section of the show. Well, listen, if they stayed with us to the, if they stayed with us to the end, they know what our charm is, right? Right. The charm is that we suck. I'm Obi. That said, we've been drinking from the garden hose. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>